if you look at uh, the Guru Granth Sahib, there is so much mention of the Hindu gods and goddesses like the, like you know, Hari, etc. will appear again and again. So you can see that is strongly charged by Hindu ideology. Now what Guru, Guru Nanak did, which is, look, first of all, the most important thing I tell all the youngsters this, watch out. If a personality talks about religion or God or spirituality from first an encounter, first an experience, reliable. If he's just doing book learning and just kind of, you know, representing what you're studying in the books in front of you and saying, oh, this is, it doesn't carry, it doesn't carry weight. First an encounter is essential part. Now, if you look at the story of Guru Nanak, he had a marvelous spiritual experience that transformed him. So it's a very clear, clear signal that here is a spiritual giant. So what did he do? All the, in fact, every, you know, major mi mystic of the Hindu tradition, when they have a spiritual experience, they will try and present the ideas of the religion they belong to in a format suited to, the, to, to, to kind of address the needs of the time. Now, in the time of Guru Nanak, there were serious issues already. For example, Hinduism is a, is a habit of getting corrupted very easily. There are all these gods and goddesses and these ideas of you know, worshipping all these various images and it had become very much artificial, mechanical, meaningless, ritualistic and he said this is becoming a clutter. So he produces the idea of God without form. So all these gods and goddesses said put them on the back burner. So he in a way kind of produced them a, a form, a, an idea of monotheism which is without form only with name, but no form. So in a way, he tried to tidy up what Hinduism he saw as kind of struggling by removing a lot of clutter that he thought is blocking the spiritual heart of Hinduism. And of course, that religion was became, if you like, this idea of Sikhism. Sikhism means studying, learning. Sikh, be a Sikh means study, learn spirituality. So it's a very marvelous, you know, again, another th great thing that you see in Guru Nanak's life is this. You see, there, there were two fighting forces in India, Hinduism and Islam. And they were at loggerheads and they were, you know, there was tremendous bloodshed, tremendous animosity. Here is this particular great master of recent India who said, let's try and reconcile. He went out of his way to see the goodness of the, of, of the Hindu tradition and the goodness of the Muslim tradition and try and unify them. So he would criticize the Muslims when they say, oh, you can't, you know, uh, you can only, you know, point in one direction. He said, no, no, God is in every direction. Why one direction? And he criticized the Hindus saying, oh, you are offering, you know, this uh, water to the sun, you know, because they were going in the river and offering this ritual, offering water to the sun. He said, ah, then he turned his back and he said, I'm offering water to my farm. <laughs> he said, how can you, this water reach the farm? He said, see, this is exactly what you're doing. So this kind of meaningless ritual that he observed, he would criticize the Hindu rituals as well as the Muslim rituals. He was trying to reconcile two major, a very difficult task. He tried and the rest of the gurus paid with their lives trying to do this. They lost their lives trying to somehow, in a way, a lot of these gurus gave up their lives to protect Hinduism. Incredible story. And I must be very frank, the Hindus have not repaid the debt they owe to the Sikhs. Really, they were paying with their life to try and protect the Hindus. And somehow the Hindus have not, you know, not realized that this debt has to be repaid to the Sikhs. Free e-learning course in Hinduism. To register, please visit www.hindu-academy.com. Talks on Hinduism. Sponsored by People Care. Encouraging caring for the elderly in their own homes. For more information, please visit peoplecare.com.